Hello again. I'm happy to present the third and final paper in our March meeting paper series presented this evening. Our next presenter is Chiara Cartuccia, who is an, who is an independent curator, writer, art historian, and researcher whose work focuses on the practice and theory of per performativity, performativity in contemporary art and the potentialities of performance as a generative epistemological tool. She has curated numerous programs, performances, and exhibitions, including the group show and discursive program, Good, Memors, Good Mirrors Are Not Cheap, at Goethe Institute, Bulgaria, Sofia, in 2019, and Under a Different Sun at Palazzo Mora, Venice, 2016, an exhibition and performance program co-curated with Celeste Ricci for Manifesta 12. She co-curated the Planetary Garden Public Program in 2018, a composite series of discursive, performative, and participatory events exploring topics as broad as borderlessness, sociopolitical accountability of networks and interspecies coexistence from the specific vantage point offered by the city of Palermo. Cartusia has published numerous essays online and in print journals, magazines, and books, and co-founded the curatorial platform Exnurk, as she has previously held curatorial positions at Savvy Contemporary Berlin between 2013 and 2016, and Manifesta Biennial Palermo Amsterdam between 2017 and 2018. We will be taking questions from the audience during the final five minutes of this presentation. Simultaneous translation to Arabic is available in the chat box. I would like to invite Chiara to present her paper. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nora, for the introduction. And I want to thank uh, also all the people at Sharjah Foundation, especially Sana Wazan, uh, all that organized such a compelling programming in this difficult time. Uh, I learned so much by listening to March meeting and I hope I will be able to be in charge of maybe next year. Um, I also want to thank you because you allow me with this paper to revisit a personal experience, professional experience uh, with Manifesta in the light of what is now an ongoing research on the Mediterranean. Uh, I will go on uh, sharing my screen with you straight away as I have the presentation. Oh, you see everything right. So I start with the title uh, and to explain what I'm going to do. I'm not, I decided not to read the paper, not even parts of them, of it, sorry, but rather to, I put together some notes so that my, my discourse, my thoughts, it's uh, as linear as possible. Uh, what I want to do nevertheless is just to quote a little couple, just a couple of lines from the actual paper that present what, what this art biennials and the Mediterranean conundrum is. Uh, so I quote myself here. In this essay, through an analysis of the specific case of Manifesto 12 in Palermo, I look at modes in which the European art world in general, a recurring large scale event in particular, have been inquiring into the geographical and epistemological framework of the Mediterranean in recent years, often by means of idealization, reiteration of the periphery paradigm, and reduction to metaphor. I also wanted to stress that the paper does not address any of the artworks presented within the biennial nor, nor parts of the program. Uh, what I will do, and what I did in the paper, and I will do also here tonight, is to rather focus on the overlapping institutional machineries of the biennial in, a, in relation to the framework provided by the Mediterranean city of Palermo. So let me start by explaining what I mean here with Manifesta in and the Euro-Mediterranean. Uh, the Euro-Mediterranean is not only the geographical space that you can imagine, so that collection of nation states neighboring uh, the Mediterranean Sea from the northern shore, but it's also something else. Uh, the Euro-Mediterranean is, is constituted as a reading of the European, of, sorry, of the Mediterranean that implies the possessive and exclusionary European perspective on the sea. One that works also in factual geopolitical terms, as we can see in the European-led militarization of the sea space, uh, with Frontex and all the other organs of the EU active in the region. 
In this context, encounter and mingling of differences is only accepted as much as it is somewhat sanitized and or framed in an aestheticizing construction, as we can see often reproduced in a general interest for material culture expressing elements of syncretism. The foreigner ear in the Euro-Mediterranean is much less appealing when it is contemporary, alive and breathing, and asks for access to the bureaucratic fabrics of the nation state. So here we this slide that just presents all the previous editions of Manifesta. As you probably know, Manifesta is a European uh, biennial, which has a nomadic nature. So every two years, it moves somewhere else in the European landscapes. Uh, since its original inception uh, in early 1990s, the institutional purpose of Manifesta is that to inquire into the most recent form of Europeness, one can say, to find the identity of a continent in continuous renewal. Oftentimes, such aim is pursued by putting in contact the supposed center that the biennial with its uh, Dutch origins comes to represent with a liminal peripheral landscape, which would provide both the scenery of sense for the curatorial project and elaboration and the test bed for methodological and formal experimentation of the biennium. If at the beginning of, uh, of the experience of Manifesto, such point of interest was lying behind the former Iron, uh, iron Curtain, uh, the former East, one, we can say, after a few years of existence, Manifesta swiftly moved on to declare that it was possible to find this conceptually fruitful periphery everywhere, even in the heart of Europe. I think this shift really operated for with Manifesta 4 in Frankfurt, with a real actual statement in which the, the Bayania was somehow justifying itself and saying, we don't seek the periphery any, anymore in the borders. Still the periphery paradigm is kept in place. Also, this as some sort of institutional idea of the, of the exhibition and the biennial, similarly to the nomadic and the European nation. So as you can see, the history of Manifest in the Mediterranean has for sure a longer history than its uh, iteration in Palermo. There are two previous editions uh, happening in Europe Mediterranean landscapes, Nicosia and Murcia Cartagena, and future ones as well, the last one in Marseille and the future one in Barcelona. The Mediterranean scenario has been appealing for Manifesta for a long time. And we can see a recurrence of similar wordings in the description of the reasons why such interest exists in texts published by ISM, the International Foundation Manifesta, in the preparation of the various Mediterranean editions. Euromed represents indeed the very last border of Manifesto's home base Europe. And it seems to offer yet again, a new possibility of connection or bridging with the other. In the case of uh, Nicosia, it's the Middle East. In the case of Murcia Cartagena, as we can see here stated even in the poster, is some sort of Northern Africa that should be in dialogue with Murcia. Uh, and in the case of Palermo, you will see later on, it's like the entire world somehow. Uh, the case of Nicosia, I cannot go into details, but it's very poignant here, as uh, for the first time, the Bayania seems to really try and approach also the post-colonial, colonial frame of inquiry. And this, I found very fascinating, besides the fact that the Bayania never, never happened, Really, uh, this, this little quote by one of the, the, the curators of this edition that was then council, Mayabu El Dahab, uh, which states, the choice of this location leaves the outsider wondering whether Cyprus is supposed to be a window on the fallacies of Eurocentrism or a wall to show where Europe ends. Something that I think we can see also some, somehow in Palermo. The European South, is for Manifesta a comfortable periphery, which does not exclude the Western European biennial from possibilities of identification. And in recent years, this scenery 
fulfills also southern desires, presenting itself as a gateway to the less accessible, practically and conceptually, global south, which, thanks to the networked activities of many international art events and institutions outside the West, like Sharjah, and also thanks to the work of curators in the West uh, that presented something uh, outside of the box, traditional box of whiteness, Europeanness, such as Oak Green Weather indeed, come to be more and more conceptualized and represented in any major show taking place today. So the choice of, um, I'm trying to, yeah, the choice of Manifesta uh, to go to Palermo for its uh, 12th edition in 2018 uh, comes as a little surprise if we consider how promising are the premises of the project. There is a richness of possibilities in terms of venues, a local partner, the municipality of Palermo, which is extremely keen in engaging with events, not only on an organizational level, but also on a more conceptual one. Palermo is announced as hosting city in autumn 2015. This is a particular year for the city as it comes to coincide with the inclusion of the Arab Norman Pass, which is a complex of buildings built during the Norman domination of Sicily, which recorded as a historical period that the cultural syncretism between Norman and the Arab, Greek, and Latin cultures already present, present in the island in the list of UNESCO World Heritage. With the reason uh, from UNESCO that I'm going to quote, Material, these, these sites are, are important because our material example of coexistence, interaction, and interchange between different cultural components and the heterogeneous historical and geographical origins. Uh, 2015 is also just two years uh, after the major shipwreck of Lampedusa of October 2013, which caused the death of 360 people was then followed a few days after by another shipwreck, which counted 35, 34 victims. This event can be, I believe, indicated as a turning point also in terms of the uh, evolution of media attention towards uh, the mi migratory issue in Central Mediterranean. Um, we can say this is the beginning somewhat of the narration of the migratory crisis, uh, the major headlines uh, these uh, events start to, to foster. 2015 is also the year of the Palermo Conference, Io sono persona, which translates in English is with I am human, organized by the municipality of Palermo to explore the migratory issue, which will have as outcome the production of the Charter of Palermo uh, with the subtitle from Migra migration as suffering to mobility as human right, a programmatic document penned by mayor of Palermo, Luca Orlando, which makes the case for the abolition of the residency permit. So when the biennial is announced, uh, we can see uh, how the wording and the phrasing is articulated. Here I put two quotes from a press release with announcement of the, the upcoming biennial and quotes from Manifesta director Hedwig Fayen and Mayor uh, Palermo Luca Orlando. So on one hand, we have the, the voice of Manifesta, uh, which states clearly that Manifesta in Palermo is presented as a possibility for a rethinking of civic urban living in Palermo, which wants to take in consideration the specificities of the territory as well as its struggles and ambition. Manifesta 12, uh, and I quote uh, here from Fine, we raise questions such as who owns the city of Palermo and how to claim back the city. The city's migration problems are symbolic of the far wider crisis situated with which the whole of Europe is facing now. And then you have Leuruca Orlando, uh, which presents the union between Palermo and Manifesta as a two-way conversation in which Palermo comes to represent the Mediterranean identity of Europe, recalling the narrative of origins of Western culture to be found in the Mediterranean with all of its implications, which through the link offered by the Central European-born biennial could travel back to the core of the continent. 
So Manifesta 12 and I quote Pal uh, Orlando, Manifesta 12 will be a fantastic opportunity for the city uh, to reinvigorate its local international identity. It is a moment for Europe to appreciate the significance of its Mediterranean dimension and identity. Palermo brings manifest in the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean to Europe. Manifesta 12 is an opportunity to celebrate Palermo for what is really is laboratory for the humanities, art and culture. Um, OMA, the architecture firm funded by Ram Colas uh, in Rotterdam, is called to research the city in a position in between some, somehow a stranger explorer, one could say a new grand tourist and a facilitator, able to build up a real urban proposal for the city to engage with and further develop. Palermo Atlas, which is the outcome of such research, and exists also as main publication of the biennial. Palermo Atlas frames Palermo as both part and catalyst of a system of global flows, somehow expanding and escaping from the more easy rhetorical device of Mediterranean multiculturalism, whose undertones have characterized the involved, involved institutions' statements, manifest and municipality mainly, thus far. And here there is also a quote from Ippolito Pessini Raparelli, one of the, the partner of OMA leading this project and also one of the future curators of the biennial. In the current political climate, Palermo's history uh, and, and character make it the ideal laboratory to reimagine from a Mediterranean perspective the liberal values we share and to address crucial issues for the present and the future of the European city. Um, Palermo Atlas describes in what I call the, the paper parascientific detail to a dense collection of data, maps, text, and relation uh, and text, and also interviews and other kind of formats, the relational quality of Palermo's geography. In its participation in an interlacing series of global networks, while still saving its local, although slightly folkloric, specificities, which makes it the perfect ground for the implementation of a biennium. Again, from uh, Ippolito Pestellini Raparelli, a quote which states, when you look at the map of flows, which is this that I'm showing you here, and is included in Palermo Atlas, when you look at the map of flows crossing through Palermo, it is clear how it behaves the city in a planetary joint. Still the Atlas, which remains, I believe, the most successful addition to the mode of operation of Manifesta, to the point to be incorporated in the methodology of the biennial for the two following editions. Indeed, both in Marseille and the upcoming edition of Pristina will have their own urban studies, uh, um, which is uh, something that the biennial proclaims wants to carry on also in future editions. So um, the Palermo Atlas, nevertheless, does not fully avoid incurring in some of the usual reductions of Palermo and the Mediterranean landscape the city comes to represent uh, to yet another reduction to yet another rhetoric advice, discursive prop, which facilitates the essentialization of the local context in the name of pre-existing curatorial intentions. I go here to explain these two concepts that I used in the, in the paper. Um, to do so, to think about Mediterranean thinking, Mediterraneanism, I'm going to take in consideration two examples of institutional phrasing in relation to the biennial project, which I believe offer a direct link to the two concepts here, um, and will allow to describe the roots, the conceptual roots of the biennial. So we start with Le Luca Orlando. So Le Luca Orlando in this quote from Manifesto 12 Guidebook says, Palermo has made its Mediterranean dimension of culture, hospitality and respect for the rights of each other into a mission, making it a reference point in Europe and the world. Here in Palermo, this is an irreversible choice of ours. There are no migrants. Those who arrive in the city become Parles Britanni and to which is followed, had in fine, 
interviewed in Moose in 2018, stating, what I think is so interesting for local and international audiences is that there is no direct specific xenophobia here, as there is in many other European cities. This is partially because of the thousands of years of living together, coexistence in Sicily, but also because of the radical policies of Mayor Orlando and the artificial and real integration of people, foreigners here. This is a bit of what it means to look at the world through Palermo's eyes. So, to carry on this, com this consideration, I put here uh, uh, um, one, an image that has been, become symbolic of uh, really of the project, uh, which is included in Palermo Atlas and has been used ma mainly, majorly really in press releases. This is a view of Palermo from afar, from a 19th century painter, Francesco Iacono, and it represents like a, a very common Mediterranean landscape. Uh, what it changes is that here, thanks to the intervention of a botanist, uh, OMA was able to recognize all the plants and trees that are present in the picture. And as you can see, if you can read it, uh, it states all the, the, the origins of these plants. And you can see that basically all that is that is not endemic, comes from all over the world. Why so? And why these plants can thrive in this space is because of the particular Mediterranean landscape and climate that allows for the stranger to flourish. So I put here a quote from Fernand Brudel, who is possibly the most famous historian of the Mediterranean, who somehow codified an idea of unity, also cultural of the Mediterranean, uh, identifying the union in the climate. So the quote says, a very special climate similar from one end to the other of the sea, which amalgamates landscapes and ways of life. Uh, so I think all of this participates in what I called all the, the, the quotes from the institutions, uh, even the, the picture of Loyacono, uh, to participate in what I called Meridia Mediterranean thinking, which is something that is very vague, really. Mediterranean thinking is here to subsume different academic and cultural formulation, adopting the Mediterranean specificities, real or imagined, as a tool to make discourse. Included in such formulation is, maybe most notably, Italian sociologist Franco Castano's writings on Southern Thought, which is in Italian Pensiero Meridiano. I put here the cover of this very important a book, Pensero Meridiano, close to Albert Camus, the rebel, because of course the, the idea of Pensero Meridiano is Southern Thought is partially inspired by Camus' Camus Spencer de Midi. Um, this formulation proposes an opposition between North and Atlantic and Mediterranean modernities and proclaims the necessity of shifting the ax axis of attention and also power back to the Mediterranean. So to overcome the stagnation of neoliberal capitalism. In fact, such discourse appears to emulate similar exclusionary methods as those professed in Northern Atlantic modernity, reducing the Mediterranean to a bit more than a Southern European slightly orientalizing fantasy in its structural dichotomy between what Cassano calls Mediterranean reasonability opposed to Northern rationality. Talking about the Mediterranean, Cassano uses the word pluriverse, which is often incapable though of including what lies outside the standardization of the Euro-Mediterranean dimension. Let's say all that is to South, to East. Southern thought describes a shift of power between European poles without any change at the general structure, without addressing how power is actually reproduced in the West without really contesting Eurocentrism in its colonial and neocolonial implications, only shifting the focus south. 
Southern thought participates in what has been defined militant Mediterraneanism, which is a cultural discourse particularly popular in Euro-Mediterranean countries with, I would say not by chance, a history of colonialism and imperialism in the Mediterranean, namely France and Italy. Connected to this perspective uh, are various comments also to the management of the migration so-called crisis in the, uh, by the Me Euro European Union, expressed by intellectuals, and I would say are also left-wing uh, intellectuals and politicians in the European South. In particular, one recurrence is that of demanding from Southern European nations a full refusal of participating in the implementation of EU politics of migration control in the name of the supposedly intrinsic Mediterranean inclination to hospitality. This comes often with uh, the objective to, yet again, foster a shift of power. Uh, and I quote in my paper, one of such consideration by an Italian scholar, Franco Cazzato, says Southern Europe may have a chance, if not following the directions of you, to be no longer an imperial periphery, but the center of a new creolizing world in which the Mediterranean may retrieve its ancient role as cultural and economic crossroads. So all of these that I illustrated before and really everything, participates in the broader spectrum of Mediterraneanisms. So Mediterraneanism is, has been used with various affectation in the course of history. I put here, but I'm not going really in details, an image from the work of Giuseppe Sergi, the anthropologist, Italian ethnoanthropologist, who first used the term as a study of race, a theory of race, no different from the, the, the Nordic one that possibly has become more famous, which of course has been also structural to Italian fascism. Uh, but the most recent uh, codification uh, of the term Mediterraneanism is in the work of the anthropologist Michael Hertzfeld to describe the complex of commonplaces, banalization and approximations used to identify some sort of Mediterranean cultural unity. And here a quote from Michael Erzfeld, my criticisms have been directed against Mediterraneanism, a coinage that I have modeled unashamedly, unashamedly on Edward Said's Orientalism and the follow-up converse of Occidentalism. The idea of a vast Mediterranean culture has frequently served the interest of this painful cultural imperialism. Flattening Mediterraneanism in whichever form of southern thought or practical militant Mediterraneanism have the capacity to exclude living experiences of erasure, marginality, systematic and systemic violence active in the Euro-Mediterranean and now even behind the curtain of multiplicity, which often still recalls a more traditional exclusionary Western universalism. These experiences that have deep historical roots are washed away by cultural and political propositions that often declare and sustain the colonial uh, process, the, the, the colonial process of fight while factually reproducing the same lexicon and methodology of the colonial project. And here I put just very briefly, because I think I'm over time, um, two quotes from two researchers that are actually inquiring in the, into the effects of such stereotypization of the Mediterranean in second generation of racialized body. One is Naor Ben Yoyada, and the other one is Camilla Author. Uh, Naor is investigating second generation Tunisia uh, youth in Sicily and how much the term Mediterranean is raising them really from possibility of identification. And Camilla is one of the scholars engaging with the Black Mediterranean and the idea of how much hybridity universalism is precluding the very existence of Blackness in Italy. I go to the conclusion. So uh, I went back to Sharda to, and Weather to think about the conclusion here. In a paper from 2005 in which it tackles the topics of Europe's relationship with its immigrants, published in the book, The Manifesta Decade, 
uh, produced on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of Manifesta, uh, Oquin Weather states in a very stark manner that Manifesta, and I quote, has resol resolutely repressed the other question, the other in the capital letter. The paper pointed out at what and whether perceived as the strong conservative agenda, a European agenda of the biennium, which caused a systematic exclusion of different voices from its formulations and programs. Although much has changed since then, and over the last 15 years, the institution has demonstrated the capacity to enlarge and expand both its scope and perspective, I will see following weather in this context, stating that Manifesto in Palermo has possibly forgotten those we can maybe call the Euro-Mediterranean internal others, the second generation, the drasialized bodies, whose voices should have been more than ever at the forefront in a biennial so largely prof profiting on an oration of openness, mobility, cross-pollination, abolition of borders, et cetera. Although Manifesto 12, presents the Palermo and the Mediterranean always in movement, open to be crossed, contaminated, even polluted by foreigner that is never fully a stranger, all these formulations do little in avoiding the static framing of human migration in just two given imagination. One is that presented by Mayor Orlando and included broadly in ISM statement, who proclaimed the natural inclination of the city to keep its doors open, a vision that is also partially including the idea of the planetary garden presented in the curator concept. And on the other hand, in M12, migration today in its geopolitical and humanitarian implication is still read in the light of the constant state of emergency formula, migration as crisis, a state of exception, which seems to put aside the everyday diasporic living experience experienced in Palermo, the routes opened and navigated by migrants as well by, as by second, third generations inhabiting the Euromed space, not only in Sicily. Uh, so, and this is really the end. Why thinking historically in the present is really stayed with me here. The Mediterranean is first and foremost, a crossing, interweaving, clashing of historicity. It is furthermore a space for the realization and negation of many differently lived experiences which cannot be reduced to any single object of analysis or contemplation. Looking historically in the present year, in and within the Mediterranean means not only to recognize and understand the things of today, the continuation of the struggles, the reiteration of dynamics of coloniality and imperialism, the structural racism of the nation state, the delusion of the national and European identity in the light of the past. It also means to understand the present as a territory that can sparkle up those pasts yet again and describe them in a perspective of new possibilities. Such a belief is the approach, for example, of the Black Mediterranean frame of inquiry, which borrows from Paul Giroy, the idea of oceanic the diasporic space, which can function as a new terrain to think and act historical political alternatives to the state of things in the Western neocolonial nations. In this case, nations of Europe. Manifesto 12 in Palermo offered me the possibility of thinking about my positionality as well as a white Southern European while trying and understanding the operations and the, of institutions and arts professionals that can be stuck in a fascination fantasy of the Mediterranean as one and fully accessible space concept. A European biennial, which is here just any other European founded, produced, conceived international art event occupying and countering or exploring the Mediterranean as a geography or a conceptual space, uh, an ambition even, can offer a real propositionality, possibility of any actual social political engagement or even outcome only in the full embrace of, uh, or full, if we full embrace all the complexity of the Mediterranean, a Mediterranean that is difficult, uncomfortable. Sorry, <laughs> I, I whipped the, the, the last thing, but I was just to say, full embrace which does not, for a Mediterranean, which is uncomfortable, even inaccessible. Uh, with, and with, I close with Ian Chambers, a Mediterranean which does not marry reflect oneself. Thank you. Sorry for going through forever. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Kiara. Uh, we have questions from the audience. I'll start with Joy Chansey. 
Thank you for this presentation, Kiara. How do you reconcile Southern European modern modernities within discourse around global South modern modernities here? So, uh, I think that would be very interesting actually to engage with uh, crossing of how uh, art events like biennials happen on the other shores of the Mediterranean and somehow reproducing a similar lexicon. I'm thinking here, for example, about Alexandria Biennial, which is uh, possibly that space, although very peculiar, in which Mediterraneanism took pretty much the same forms that you can find in Europe. Uh, so it's a complicated issue. I also believe with that generally speaking, when you think about global South, I am very, I'm not very comfortable about inclusion of South and Mediterranean in that, which is something that happens uh, which I don't know how much is it because it's fashionable nowadays. Um, I, I, I understand absolutely the fact that Mediterranean discourse can be an alternative to certain uh, Western, Northern European modernities that have had an impact in the last 500 years um, on this planet. But still, we are talking about Europe. Still, we are talking about whiteness. So all of this has to be ascribed. And these, I think, make um, an inclusion of South, European South and Global South very dangerous, even. Thank you. Another question from Aya Bishara. Did the Palermo Biennial succeed in reviving the history of the city as an incubator for all civilizations, according to what was mentioned in the press release period? So I believe that uh, Palermo has been is a very peculiar landscape mm -hmm. and has had uh, a history of um, somehow just a position of culture. But I, I think that the fact of uh, thinking about Palermo as an incubator for multiculturalism is a little bit of a story today. Um, because it's even in the Arab normal uh, conceptualization that you think about, you know, these harmonious living together of Arabs or Normans, it's, it's not that, it's about Normans tolerating what was already in, on the island. So this has to be conceptualized. It cannot be banalized because reiterate some dynamics of exclusion that are active on people living there today is not something that leaves them on a level of abstraction. So it's been successful to a certain extent, and I think has had a lot of shortages on the other, which is what I try to say in the paper, also more factually political uh, scape and scope. Thank you very much, Kiara, for your presentation. Thank you. We will conclude our presentations today with your presentation. Tomorrow we will reconvene again at 5 p.m. Gulf of Standard Time. We will have more of March meeting 2021 papers presented tomorrow. We will also conclude our March meeting with a presentation from Ryan Tabit about his show, which is now on display at the Sharjah Art Foundation. He will be in conversation with uh, Ryan Inouye from Sharjah Art Foundation and a group of panelists. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.